The two masses in the Atwoods machine shown in the figure have an initial speed of V equals 0.17 meters per second and M2 is moving upward. How high does M2 rise above the initial position before momentarily coming to rest given M1 equals 3.1 kilograms and M2 equals 5.1 kilograms? All right, so they're asking us how high, which is basically asking for the value of H here. H is equal to what? This is the first case where mass 1 was going up, which by the way would mean that mass 1 was going down. And this is the second case where both of their velocities are equal to 0. Okay, case 1, case 2. Let's talk about conservation of energy. Let's talk about how this is a conservative system, which means that energy in the first case is equal to the total energy in the second case. Now energy is made up of the potential energy and kinetic energy of object one, mass one, as well as the potential energy and kinetic energy of object two, mass two. All of these being for the first case. And of course these things are equal and they are defined the same way to the total energy in the second case. So I'm just going to copy and paste them. Just try and keep in mind that we are talking about the second case here on the right and the first case here on the left. Other than that, if I don't make that assumption, then I have just too many subscripts and it gets confusing. Initially, okay, what we're going to do to make things simplest is we're going to say that this right here is h equals zero. That's pretty much the best way we can simplify this. We could make anything we, we want the baseline, but I'm going to make this starting point h is equal to zero. So I can say things like the potential energy. Remember, mgh of mass 1, okay? So the position right here is equal to zero because h is equal to zero. And then I'm going to say things like, okay, also in case 1, this thing is headed down. The kinetic energy of object 1 is 1 half m1 v squared. Actually, negative v because it's headed down, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to square that anyway. All right, now on to the second object in the first case. His potential energy. He's at the ground level here, the ground level that we've invented, so his potential energy is zero as well. And his kinetic energy, 1 half m2 positive v squared because he is heading up. On to the second case here. The potential energy of object one. Well now it's not zero. In fact, the way we've written this, this point would be called h equals negative h. And up here h would just be equal to h. Basically the length of this thing is h, so we're going to have to call everything below this line negative and above it positive, but it is the same distance either way. So the potential energy of object 1 in this case would be mg, m1g, times its height, which is negative h. Its kinetic energy, don't forget, before momentarily coming to rest, which means its kinetic energy is zero. On to object 2. His potential energy, relative to where he started, m2, g, positive h. And his kinetic energy, momentarily coming to rest, 0. Give me a moment while I clean this up a little bit. 1 half m1 v squared plus 1 half m2 v squared equals negative m1 gh plus m2 gh. Let's go ahead and factor some things out and then start solving for h like we were asked for. Could factor out 1 half v squared here. Could factor out gh here. could divide both sides 
by everything over here, that's not h. g times negative 1 plus m2. Which would cancel all those out. And we'd have a cool formula for h, which simplified is v squared m1 plus m2 over 2 g m2 minus m1. Now we just plug and chug because all of these things we know. v squared would be, from up here, 0 0.17 squared and m1 plus m2 that's 3.1 plus 5.1 all over 2 times g times m2 minus m1 5.1 minus 3.1 having solved all of this give me a moment while I go to my calculator This comes out to 0 0.00604 meters, or just about uh, 6.04 millimeters.